My name is Fraser. My name is Mark. And we are the hosts of the Geekiest Show Alive. To the outside world, we're ordinary geeks. But in the Fab International Studios, we talk comics and find other geeks just like us. This is Geek of the Week. So, we're going to start this off. This is Geek of the Week's look back at 2018. Now, we're going to start with the films, uh, all superhero-based, all that came out this year. And we're going to go in sort of an order, like, of release. Um, I'm going to start off at the beginning of the year in February with Black Panther. I can't even believe Black Panther came out this year. This year, I love that film so, so much. So, let's get your... Mark, let's get your opinions on... You just got it. I loved it. <laughs> I it loved amazing. it. It was amazing. It was amazing. Now, I've, I've, Black Panther's always been a character that I've liked as, for, for forever, basically. Mm. And I was really pleasantly surprised that that became such a high-profile film because he was... Um, in, in Civil War, he was kind of like oh, look, we've put the, the Black Panther in, isn't it cool? Yeah. Whereas this film was just excellent. Just like, how ama- look how amazing Black Panther is. Yeah. And, and his world is yeah, around exactly him, right. how incredible it is. Exactly right. And uh, Loved it. it. It just took the box office away. Like, it's one of the films to make one billion, and it's it just sort of passed all the other solo and it, films. And, and it was still at the it. cinema when Infinity, and, War, when Infinity War came out, yeah. yeah. It, and, it was a perfect uh, double feature. There. Yeah, exactly. It, and, unintentionally. Really. And I don't think that they expected it to still be there because Infinity War came out like three or four months later and yeah. and Black Panther was still it's, rocking it. Still kicking butt, still kicking butt. And I think that what helped it was it's, you know, it's that representation finally put on screen and stuff like that and they invested so much into this. Like, they made the they had their own soundtrack, you know, they got um, Kendrick Lamar in to do, like, music for it. There was build-up and there was a... You know, they were invested fully into, like, this cultural representation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought, it you know, it and served that, the film well. And, and the comics kind of were, were, were already on it, but I love the way they kind of, like, made... African culture technological yeah. without kind of like like undermining the African culture it was brilliant exactly, absolutely yeah. brilliant it was, a, it was a perfect blend I think of the two um, that's and a really nice word blend. blend that is a good word a very it's descriptive and blend. that's a good word yes it's a, it fused was a nice together. blend fused the two together with a bit of uh, yeah. <laughs> vibranium I really enjoyed as well the uh, I think the villain of the piece was uh, you know people say a lot about Marvel and their villain problems I personally feel like in phase 3 and a bit in phase 2 they've completely destroyed that stereotype I don't think of, they have of having villain, villain problems. problems a lot of it is like the villain's just the hero but in a different costume which is fair to say in quite a lot of the films it's a fair like dig to make um, but I think they've totally got rid of that like this Killmonger he had the right ideas but went about the wrong way like the right intentions went about it completely mm. the wrong way and his sort of, motivations you can yeah. understand them for sure and, but like at the end T'Challa sort of learns from the villain and sort of you know makes like brings Wakanda into the rest of the world and like exposes him not in a yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, reveals maybe not exposes just goes here we are we've got we're quite oh, yeah, we're, we're quite Wakanda we're pretty sick, not going to lie. And then a couple, <laughs> a couple of week, maybe like a week, maybe in the story time or some f- storyline at the MCU, you get Thanos invading it. So it's kind of like, no, oh, bit of regret there. Bit of regret. Yeah. Now, moving on, Swift, like a nice little transition there. In April, we had Avengers Infinity War, which was, you know, a 10-year build-up to this incredible, Mate. epic film, 18 Mate. films in the making in this. Did you cry? Blew it apart. Oh, of course it. I cried for Tony Stark, and I didn't. Yeah. Not that invested in Tony Stark, but I thought oh. this was the film and that speech that Thanos gives to Tony. Like he's gone, mate. He's a goner, and then he survives. And Peter I've, goes, and I'm like, no, I can't. I've, do. I've said, I've said it a hundred times, but I was okay. I'm I was okay. Now, no, I was okay. <laughs> and then Rocket's grief. Yeah. Rocket's grief. He's a he's an animated raccoon, but his true bitter sadness when all his friends died I was it's, just like what ma- oh what makes, my feelings what makes it worse and apologies if you I'm, know you didn't I'm twig getting, on to this I'm getting is a bit cut up he, now he set like he says um, 
he talks you know the whole thing with Foy is like oh I'm the captain you know all, there's all this big deal like he's like the leader or whatever but he's the only one left so he is now it's all foreshadowed oh. previously and there's loads of stuff with Spidey and Tony Stark which is like builds up to it and then I remember watching what it a film the second time and uh, the first time I watched it obviously I caught because oh Spidey's gone this is and he has that emotion uh, all apparently ad-libbed as well by Tom Holland, what an incredible actor! Uh, I didn't. You, I Re- think you t- mentioned that last. Really time. hope to meet him one day. Fingers crossed. That's my. Uh, that's my dream. I just <laughs> hang out and be spied. It like dressed up as Spider Man. Go hey. Um, but less, <laughs> less, less, on, le- less on that. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. So the first time I watched, it, obviously caught up and like, oh, this is so emotional. But then someone was like, the reason he fights on, or the reason he knows something's happening, is because of his spider sense. And I was like, you making this even worse. And the second time, I cried even more, which I didn't think was possible. I'm getting a tear in my right. No, I, I'm, I, I, I'm I got a little bit sad as well. Wipe but, away. Um, oh, we're gonna that's, move on, move on. But yeah, I'm but every time, no, every time I watch it, it's still. You I'll are wait. actually crying. It's just, all right, no need to it's, call me out. <laughs> but yeah, again. But what a film! Can't say uh, enough about this film. Like, like I say, ten years in the making, and it was incredible to see all these characters. Like, if you enjoyed any MCU character in the past ten years, mm. someone was there for you. You know what I mean? And Doctor Strange was incredible in this. Yeah, scene. he was. He was Went awesome. full magical on this. Tony's story, his arc. The MCU is basically the story of Tony Stark in a way. I know people don't like Tony Stark, but I do. A big overarching thing is like if you follow Tony throughout all these films, you're basically following the story of the yeah. MCU. Um, I think Cap, Cap didn't get as much pull as it, like you'd expect, but he still got his things. Four was epic in this, and yeah. it just led on to Ragnarok. How badass and, and for Stormbreak. Really yeah. He got Stormbreaker. Like, Four could have killed Thanos, and I reckon he's going to be a big like he was. Yeah, Thanos has got uh, some splaining to do uh, when Four finds him again, and uh, the whole Avengers catch him again. I, but yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. Brilliant. And so good, excited for Endgame. And the good guys, good guys lost. I know. Who to funk it? Who to funk but, it? But that's the thing again. Lo- like, um, like in Black Panther, the. You understand the motivation yeah. of the bad guy. Again, going about it the wrong way, but uh, still it's... Is he that much of a bad guy? He doesn't see himself as a bad head, guy. Yeah. That's one of those things, isn't it? The best villains think they're the good guy and stuff mm. like that. And everyone's the hero of their own story. Mm. And it's, you know, there you go, mate, there you go. And funny enough, two weeks later... Was it two weeks? I think it was like two... It was very close anyway in April. Deadpool 2 came out and it was like, what? It was crazy, and you know we got Josh Brolin again in another superhero film, but this time he was Cable. So Deadpool two, what did you uh, think of this? Of course I loved it. Adventures? Of course <laughs> I loved it. It was wonderful. Deadpool is just so good. It's just I, I love how it doesn't take itself seriously. I love how it, yeah. it's 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 just such a. A light relief, yeah. From, if, I mean, I th- particularly at the same time as Infinity, Infinity War, War, which broke me. It was just daft and funny, and it was nice to have a laugh. Self-referential, it? and it's just great. I think this is why Deadpool thrives in this period <clears throat> we're in now, because we've got, like you say, we've got so much superhero stuff that a parody of it is perfect for it. Uh, Deadpool probably wouldn't have been able to exist earlier on in superhero films. Or no, back I when think we, they timed it really back, well. Like it's it's perfect unfortunately I think Fox it, you know the whole thing Fox and Disney I hope we do still get to see Deadpool and my hope is that this PG-13 Once Upon a Deadpool they release is them testing the waters to see if it would work at Disney or oh, Disney could do an R-rated still I mean we'll like, see 15, 18 for us really in the UK I, I keep know. talking all American terms but nah PG-13 <laughs> but yeah and again incredible marketing like the best thing about the first film in my opinion was the marketing and the film yeah. lived up to the hype and then the marketing was back at it again the Celine the mar- Dion thing oh, bang on Ash is amazing amazing <laughs> and it's still like even this Once Upon a Deadpool they had great marketing for that as well and it's just golden mate <laughs> mm. they had stuff to bring it back to UK relevance he did stuff with Manchester United and Wayne Rooney he had a dream about Wayne Rooney in one of them and it was just incredible just hilarious in my opinion you know, it's funny then we entered the summer Bright, bright skies, bit of a tan, or rain in England. You know, it was co- apparently fo- something was coming home. Um, didn't Ugh. come home. No, but we of course got, it didn't. <laughs> we got Ant Man and the Wasp. Now, last I checked, 
You missed you missed out on that one. I haven't though. seen it yet, but I got it for Christmas, so I'm going to watch it. I was going to say, it. it's out, I, it was out on DVD release, and I was like, oh, should I take like... But I'm I got it for it. Christmas, but I, I also got a Nintendo Switch, so, so I've been busy. Oh, there, there, was, <laughs> there was priorities there. So, yeah. ooh, I, you're, you're gonna have to You're going to have to call was, this one, I'm afraid. I was going to say, do you know about the post credit scene? No. Okay, then, I, right. But guys, that post credit scene, right? Is all I'm gonna have you, to say. You can about spoil that. me. I deserve it. I should have you seen sure? it by now. Okay, so in the post that, right? I'll talk about Ant Man and the Wasp. Ant Man and the Wasp again. It was similar to Deadpool. It was nice sort of break away from Infinity War and being like, oh, I've been sad. And it was a great cast. And the thing that let it down was all the cool stuff that you know the shrinking and the growing stuff was seen in the trailer. So that sort of, I think, dampened it's like it dampened it for me. And I, I think for a lot of people may agree as well. Like a lot of it you saw in the trailer, and it was fun to see this cast again. And again, it's f- like they're a funny, funny bunch. The um, yeah, and I do like the dynamics that they've set up in here. And I'm looking forward to actually seeing this group in the Avengers films. I think that was more of a it's more of an advertisement of like, okay, I want to see these in Avengers now. Now that we got to see, um, I know called him Hank. Then we got to see Scott in like Civil War. It was like, okay, now I want to see all these guys into Avengers, which looks like yeah. what, what we're going to see in Avengers Endgame. But for me, the most memorable thing about this is the post credit scene. So, so they save. I want to get into. They basically. They have this machine. They finally save the original Wasp, but this now opens up opportunities for like different timey wimey stuff in all this particle da 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 science malarkey, wibbly wobbly timey wibbly wobbly wobbly timey, and you know all this whatever quantum realms and your standard stuff. Right. So Scott goes in, and he's like, "Oh guys, yeah, I'm in," and he's checking on them, and they fade away to dust. So everyone thinks so they've gone missing. They've you know disappeared in the snap. And now everyone thinks ha- uh, Scott's missing as well, but he's not. He's in there, which is why it's a big thing in the end game trailer when he's like at the door. He's like, "Wait, what? Was this a week ago or something?" Or and he's just like, "Hey!" So and they reckon the rumor is now now that he's gone into there, he's picked up his data and all that sciencey stuff. He can do like time travel stuff. So I think okay. it, this again was sort of like a build up. It was like the post credit scene to Infinity War, like with Captain Marvel. It was building up to the next film, which yeah, sometimes these MCU films are. Like oh, sometimes you post credit scene, sometimes mother, f- and then Some, he faded yeah. away. And just my 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 uh, that was me living my best life. Oh, it was incredible. One, I was just happy to see Maria Hill again. I was like, oh, Maria. Oh, sh- no. Nah. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, another film that came out in July. We're probably going to touch on this briefly because I only recently s- saw it, and I imagined you would have missed this. Cut. Knowing your feelings towards animation in cinema, go on. Was Teen Titans Go no, to the movies, it. and this was hilarious. This was like it was on levels with like Lego Batman because it was very self-referential. It made jokes and stuff like that. Had digs at Deadpool, and there was this whole thing with the marketing where they were having it. They were like, there was a Green Lantern movie. No one likes to talk about it. And then Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds obviously shot back. Then they shot back. There was this incredible back and forth. And again, it was. It was worked really well. It made you just think, just stick with these films, DC, you're doing really well. But we'll move on in the future. We're going to talk about how DC are back on form, which is exciting to see. But yeah, I enjoyed it. It was f- a fun time, and it's out on DVD and all those. Have you got it on DVD? Definitely worth to check out. You're going to lend it me? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that means pro- no. Nah, yeah, probably will, to be fair. <laughs> and now we're going to October to a spooky season. Spooky. Very sp- spooky. And we're going to talk about Venom. Now, this is exciting for us because Venom was literally like our topic point in our first show. So now yeah. this is sort of like going around to where we popped up. We it is. We creeped out. We've been around 11 weeks. Creeped in and just like, hey guys, how's it going? We're going to talk some geeky comic stuff. Um, but yeah, Venom. Do you want to talk Venom was just fun. All the people going, wow, 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 yeah. no Spider Man. Oh, just get over yourself. It was. It, it, it's not the kind of film that's going to change your life. It's not the kind of film that's going to make yeah. make 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 waves and win awards yeah, or it's anything. Not a trendsetter but or it was like fun and it, it was, was cool and it was well done yeah. and 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 there was enough plot it was just a good fun film I it f- wasn't I the best it, yeah. but it wasn't bad at all I thought it was hilarious some I loved it some of the bits in it like the Eddie Brock and Venom the symbiote dynamic which is yeah exactly right so fun and apparently there's more Tom Hardy footage to come around so I'm just oh, it was just so fun. it was yeah. funny obviously and, uh, it was like don't get the Venom hate it and was, I'm glad it's been really it, successful it was yeah I'm sort of like in a way like hey um, I want like 
other out, like I wanted to enter this, into the spider verse to do a bit better so that, like I want them to go more around that but I'd, basically the lesson I want them to get from Venom is sort of do Spider-Man characters without Spider-Man don't try and take the MCU Spidey away yep. which I think they'll probably do but I yeah like I say it was just funny like it was more one of those it was like a pre-MCU film like those mm-hmm. Punisher ones and those less Daredevil in a way but sort of like that and it was I feel like if it came out around that and they were like oh, okay this is pretty good and like it wasn't awful was it let's be honest and no it was fun you know give it the benefit of the doubt now we're in December oh we caught up pretty fast we have and the first one we're going to talk about interestingly enough back we certainly was Into the Spider-Verse now this film was just amazing spectacular I mean, we, we covered it quite Spider-Man we film. covered it quite strongly a couple of weeks ago and I, I was blown away by how good it was I mean yeah. I, I kind of expected it to be good but not Outstanding, and it was. It was. It was ex- an exceptional film. Do you mind if I go through basically your whole sort of a story with this film? Yeah, you can do. Just sort of like a full cycle. So the first time I think I mentioned this, Mark was like, "Ugh, animation in film, Ugh, whatever." Like non interested. Then I think you saw a trailer or something. You're like, "Ooh, yeah, that's okay." Fair. And then there was. Um, I, I, and I, I, then, I had a journey and then you're like oh yeah that, okay and you sort of ding like oh I'm definitely going to check it out then and then we had all this talk about all these like oh it's got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes like it did at a time I think it's on the ni- still in the 90s and then we talked about this award and you're like okay now I'm getting overhyped and yeah like, oh, that's no. true and then you watch the film and it's like yeah no it, it <laughs> lives up to that it was brilliant it was absolutely brilliant and I'm glad it was brilliant spectacular amazing it was spectacular <laughs> well done it was friends. the ultimate side of- <laughs> <laughs> no I, I like I really enjoyed this, and I'm excited that we're going to get more. It was the perfect Miles film. It was a great Peter film, Gwen Stacy film. Mm-hmm. Like all the characters got their just desserts. Everything was like they served it well. They've set up a great, an incredible post credit scene, which you know inks it even more and was just yeah. hilarious. It was again, it's sort of in the closest thing that's come to it in my head is like that Lego Batman of being self-referential but still telling an important story. Yeah, like, it was poking it was, fun it at was really well history. Done. And the whole, you know the story, but... And it gave a new take, and I think it's... Yeah, loved it. ...kept people interested. Now, the last film we're going to talk about is uh, the sequel to Waterboy. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> this is Aquaman. Now, I've... Uh, like I said before, I feel like DC are back on form with this. Yeah, it was um, good. It was closer to Wonder Woman than, like, Suicide Squad yes. or Justice League. Like, I didn't mind Justice League, but it was, like... Uh, that's where the ship sort of sunk a bit. They, they ironically, rushed Justice the, League. Ironically, the ship did sink there, but Aquaman, w- luckily, was underwater exactly. to push it back up. Exactly. And I think nice. this is what they need to do. They just need to get, like... This is why I'm sort of excited with DC, because we've got Shazam coming up, and then we've got Wonder Woman um, 84. And it's, again... I'm more excited about Wonder Woman they, than I am Shazam. But, but they're going for, like, those single characters, and it's important to build your characters first, because yeah. they're what are going to build your universe, and you've got to know about your characters before you see them all and together. The, and that's why the JLA thing kind of fell flat yeah. for me. They hadn't done enough establishment. Because you, know, you knew some of the characters, like... Well, you knew half the characters, but you didn't really know the full, t- and full team, and... The thing was, people knew the Flash because of the TV show, but it's a different Flash, and it's... Do you know what I mean? You've got a... Like, that's what the MCU did, right? They built their characters before they made the team. And then now, mm-hmm. I guess now you can say, oh, but sometimes they'll introduce, like we say, a Black Panther in a thing, but they've got to that point where they can do that. Yeah. They can just throw in a character and be like, here you go. And, and it was just one in stuff. that case, whereas there were three new characters in JLA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess you got Spider-Man as well in Civil War, but people... So, yeah, that's a good point well made people sort of know Spider-Man but like their films were coming out and yeah but I dug it I dug it now we made if you it's a festive time it is there's a great film called Trading Places sadly it's got no comic book relevance right but there's a little wager made in there now me and Mark Mark okay. and I there we go <laughs> predicted it already <laughs> I can't help you now it's proper annoying I know we, 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 made, we had a wager. We had a, we? made a wager about Into the Spider Verse and Aquaman, and I'm quite happy to admit defeat purely because I don't know if it's I underestimated Aquaman or overestimated Into the Spider Verse, but I thought it would make more money. But that was purely because I still had that cynicism with the DC EU, and, and I was and a bit the worried. The thing is, it's not like out of the two films, I preferred Spider Verse, and yeah. I, in a weird way, I'd have liked you to have been right. But you weren't. Yeah. 
Do you want to do it? I'm about to do, do, it. do it. Can I do it? Yeah. That oh, is myself that high five. So I enjoyed like in that. Like in trading places, we had a very small wage, and instead of I think they do like a nickel I enjoyed or a penny. That a we, lot. we did a self high five, and we're looking forward to doing many more self high fives in 2019. But, but when you look wages. at it, Spider Verse did incredibly well for an animated yeah. film. It's in like the top 30 films yeah. of the year. It's I think it's the most successful animated film of the year, despite only being out for a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. And it's and to be technical we've got as the well, figures it's, here. It's made more money yeah if yeah you take it, it take out the budget yeah but, but budget wise it's it's more profitable yeah but that wasn't what the bet was fraser no but this is another interesting tidbit it just shows the importance of the chinese box office because i was looking at the figures aquaman has killed it in china uh, okay. and i think what helped aquaman in this sense was you could tell dc uh warner brothers i'm gonna say warner brothers because i'm not i don't want to throw dc under the bus it's warner brothers you could tell Warner Brothers weren't confident with Justice League because they slammed all the international releases together with the US release. Right. And that's usually a sign to show that a company's not too a bit worried about it. But what they did with Aquaman is it's been in, out in China since the beginning of December. We got it like a week before the US. Australia mm. got it as well before the US. And then the US got it. So what they'll do is they'll release it to different uh, international markets. They build up that hype. And then when it finally comes to America... You know, it's already got that, oh, this is great, oh, this is good, or we saw it in our country, and Americans go, oh, finally, we get to see it. And so it just shows that, you know, Warner Brothers and DC were proud of this. Yeah. And it just get like... And it, it, they, they, they should it. be, because it was really it well was done. It was good, yeah. The, right, l- l- qu- the figures, very quickly. Facts and figures. This is obscene when you think about it. The, the kind of figures is, uh, the Spider-Verse made $35.4 million in its opening weekend. Yeah. And Aquaman made $67 million in its opening weekend. That's incredible. A lot of money. In it. When you consider how tiny Britain yeah. is, right? Yeah. They, uh, Aquaman made $5.2 million in Britain. Yeah. And Spider-Verse made $2.2 million yeah. in Britain. Yeah. In a weekend. And it's in December that's, as well. That's like, phenomenal. Th- like, what I'll say is as well, when I was looking, there was a lot of movies out when Spy- um, and Into the Spider-Verse came out, mm. and they still managed to top them all. Like, you got that Mary Poppins and all those other films that aren't comic book films. Don't worry, we won't talk about them. No. Yeah. They're, 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 for a, them. they're for another radio show. <laughs> non <laughs> A specific radio show that's non-comic books. We talk about every film and TV that is specifically not about a comic <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> well, don't Let's know. not do it, though. No, not for us, not for us. Now, we are going to touch briefly on TV, and this is sort of like a sad time. Ta- yeah, it's a bit of a sad time, really, because, well, the oh, MC, don't, MC don't, Netflix don't, don't, shows all went. It's but been, we've d- had a lovely chat, and now you've we now did, well, we got massive downer. We've got Iron Fist Season 2, which was much better than Season 1. Yeah, it, it was. was a nice... Um, nice way to finish it. We've got an incredible season three of um, Daredevil. Luke Cage season, Wonderful. season two happened. Mm-hmm. It definitely occurred. Uh, I watched it. Did you? Yeah, it happened. It was all right. That's all I'm going to say. It wasn't great. It was all right. It was all right. It would do. But now, yeah, the, the last thing we're going to get, it seems, is maybe a Punisher. Punishers in and January, Jessica Jones. January 2019. Yeah. There's one more Jessica season of Jessica Jones. 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 That's it. So really, it's a bit, this, a bit of a bummer, really. It? it is a bit of a bummer. Um, but those those were great. They were. I'm, I'm interested to see what happens next year with the Disney thing. Whether or not they, they whether or not they reboot those heroes, or those yeah. heroes are just gone and you won't see them again in there's, the MCU. Yeah, there's, or, been a lot, there's been a lot of talk about like how you're not going to see Luke Cage or because it's but so they're much, major characters so much, that they're just so, getting rid of. Yeah, there's so much rift though between the film and TV people. Like there was a split and and what's going to happen with stuff like oh. Runaways and Cloak and Dagger? Oh no, they're they're fine. They're not Netflix. Yeah, they'll probably just get moved to a DC like a DC. <laughs> I've been talking too much about DC, a Disney stream. Like yeah. Disney own small p- portions in Hulu. They're going to own more when they take over Fox and stuff like that so right, they're fair fine enough. don't you worry about them they're gonna be just Runaways was fine brilliant I loved Runaways I want to talk about an incredible series Black Lightning I, it was I loved that as well I loved it amazing it was a DC show that wasn't in the CW and wasn't Which awful is good. like Gotham and it, it benefited from yeah. not being related to any of yeah. the other stuff because I was thinking I was like oh yeah I could see this in the CW and then as soon as you watch the first couple of episodes like nah this is too, too serious or different just completely different tones to the CW and you know what it worked I mean okay so with the latest crossover in the CW universe they've sort of inc- inc- like um, 
alluded to the fact that all the TV seri- TV shows are connected by different Earths and all that sort of stuff. So it is maybe technically related, but it, not really at though. this moment in time. Not, I mean, it technically, but it could be. It could be, but yeah. So I really dug it. Um, I enjoyed again, like we said, with Black Panther, the representation not just mm. of uh, mm. African American, but like LGBT was on there. As yeah, well, exactly and was, right. And and th- th- that was part of their marketing. And I'm like, well, it's cynical, perfect, but it worked. Perfect one to see in it. And then speaking of the CW, you know that mm. all those shows are still thriving and happening. Well, I say thriving. That some of them are taking a dip. But one show I really want to shout out with the CW is Legends of Tomorrow because it's just gone for the craziness. And that's why, I, in my opinion, it's the best one of the CW because it's just, it knows what it is. It's aware. And it's just like, screw it. We're having a good time. We're going to keep this going. <laughs> now, one last little bit of 2018. Of course, I had to leave it to the end because it's one of my favourite things about 2018. It's been a great year for Spider-Man. It has been a Spider-Man great year. Spider-Man fans, just Spider-Fanatics, just everything Spiders, really. And we had a game. Spider-Man PS4 I was looking forward to this ever since they've released it and it was for the longest time they wouldn't tell you the release date at one point we just got the year and I was like 2018 is going to be a great year I don't know when this Spider- <laughs> Spider-Man game it could be January it could be December but it's going to be a great year anytime and then we got September and I was in camp and I was like I'm going to go back from camp and I'm going to get a play Spider-Man and I've played and all the DLCs have been incredible uh, I'll probably talk more about the final one because I've not actually completed it yet I downloaded it I was dead excited and then of course it was Christmas so you had to spend time with your family I was like but oh, I want to um, spend time with Peter Parker Mary Jane Black Cat Felicia Hardy and all these guys <laughs> but I was you know in the Christmas spirit so I spent time with family and friends <sighs> kind of kind of regret it. very briefly going to touch on the fact that I've downloaded Inky Pen which is a um, a switch. new switch kind of comic book app thing so I'll review that at another point when I've yeah. had a proper look at it. But yeah. And that was launched amazing. earlier this month. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Mm. Now, what were your favourite things of 2018? Maybe some stuff we didn't touch upon. Maybe there's a TV show you were like, oh, Krypton was amazing, or one of those other ones. Um, like Mark mentioned Runaways briefly. If there's anything in 2018, or anything in 2018 you didn't like, your opinions on these, we want to know. So um, join the Facebook group. Let us know in there. I was at, on Twitter. Do whatever you do whatever you want to do. Just get in do. touch, like. You do you. All right, that's us done. Thanks for listening to Geek of the Week. Be sure to tune in next week. Same geek time, same geek channel. And if you want to follow us on social media, it's at GOTW Radio on Twitter. Search for Geek of the Week Radio Show on Facebook. And to listen again, it's www.mixcloud.com forward slash Geek of the Week Radio Show.